Welcome to Secret Rooms 3, a continuation of my Secret Rooms series. This video is a walkthrough of the map in case I made the puzzles a bit too difficult. If you have not played the map, I obviously recommend it. Link to the map's download will be in the description. This walkthrough is split up into sections with timestamps on the screen, the description, and the comments. They are, like the tips, split into what treasure lays hidden in the room. Let's get started. Before you are allowed to enter the first level, you must go through the map instructions and shoutouts. In a cave below the statue, you will find the map instructions. Right click on the relevant text to progress through the instructions at your own pace. Once complete, you can click through again if you so wish. To your right, on the way out of the map instructions, you will find the shoutouts. Right click the relevant text to start the animation. I will verbally call out each of these wonderful people who volunteered to help test my map. Silly Goose, I Locus, Rank 1, Global Elite, Silly Goose, Fabrizio, Certified Number Guesser, Meat Bun 1, HJAC69, The Beta of Testers, Dark Galaxy 1, Beta Tester, Breaker of Maps, Kimmy, Internal MCC Tester, Danity, Friend, Bill 25, Representative for Bumbling Players, Green Tree 22, With an onslaught of accolades, Captain Sparkles. Captain Sparkles did not beta test this map, but he is displayed through his support of playing my previous maps and be my inspiration to start making maps in the first place. Thank you, Captain. Now that you have done the prerequisites, travel clockwise on the path around the central area to come across the first unlockable level. Right click the click to unlock text to start the animation. Once it is done, you may proceed through the portal to start the level. Each new level will be further down this same path. The diamond tip will inform you that you need a channeling trident, further insinuating that you need to hit a particular block with it. You can find tridents in the remnants of the Atlantia level. You can right click to pick one up. At the end of the hall, on the bottom left chiseled bookshelf, you can find a channeling enchant along with other things. In the farm, in the long centrated room of Swix substances, you can find XP bottles in the form of radioactive materials. I wouldn't hold on to these longer than the half life. There are several anvils around that you can use to enchant the trident. In the central area, facing away from the level's hallway, and to the right, you will find a room with signs on the wall. To the bottom left of the signs, there is a lightning rod on the ground. Throw the trident at it, lightning will strike and the door will open. The diamond can be found in the chest. The Emerald Tip informs the player that large drip leaves will interact with players, items, and projectiles. If it isn't clear, you are looking for a large drip leaf. First, you will need a projectile. You can find an infinite supply of snowballs at the beginning of the desolate level behind a trap door surrounded by bookshelves in a barrel. Then from the central area, facing the hallway, turn right and head into the old instructions area with the spiraling tree. Below the cauldron at the base of the statue that is surrounded by small drip leaves, lies a sneaky large drip leaf. Aim the snowball between the gap to hit the large drip leaf. The floor in the center will descend, and in the cave you will find the emerald above the water. The nether star tip reminds players that copper ages naturally over time. Yet there seems to be a block that hasn't. In such a rundown place, all the copper should be aged somewhat, but one block is as pristine as ever due to the copper's waxing mechanic. Copper can be waxed to preserve its state with honeycomb, and unwaxed with an axe. You can find a golden axe at the back right of the farm, stuck in a log. You can right click to retrieve it. Back at the central area, under the golden ring, lies a fresh copper block. Right clicking it with the axe will unwax it opening a door and raising a staircase. At the end of the tunnel lies another star. Don't fear these jumps, there are barrier blocks to help you out. As the totem tip describes, mangrove trees can grow propagules, their sapling equivalents, under their leaves when bone mealed. The first step is to acquire bone meal to use. In the farm level, in the collection of barrels on the right, you can find wheat and hay blocks. Back at the central area, there is a stump filled with water you can climb up and jump into to find a composter. Filling it with the hay you gathered, you can collect a bone meal. Back at the end of the hall, there is a tree sprouting from between the farm and the library levels respectively. Under its trunk you will find an off-colored leaf block. 
This is the mangrove leaf you've been searching for. Right click it with the bone meal in hand to grow the propagule underneath and the bookshelf will open up. The totem is found by headed right down the hall in the first room on the left. It is placed upon the table where you can right click to pick it up. Golden Apple Tip relays how scaffolding can only extend up to six blocks without supports unless new ones are placed below. The scaffolding will store their own value about how far away they are from a support, which can be quickly changed with a trapped door. As a closed door is considered supporting, while an open one is not, from the central area, toward the room with all the old shoutouts, you will find a scaffolding lining the hallway. The scaffold above has a trap door under it. Simply open this trap door. You will hear a tune play, and the tree trunk at the back of the room will open up, revealing the secret room. Hanging on a tree in the center is a golden apple. You can right click it to obtain. Once the level is complete, use the tip book, turn to page 3, and click return to lobby to, well, return to the lobby. The diamond tip informs the player that certain items float in lava and don't burn. Players may have noticed a smithing table, ancient debris, and a smithing template pointed up near the lava pool. The item in question is netherite. There are two locations you can find it. One is at the end of the semicircle path past the dripstone. Amongst the ruins there is a dropper containing a piece. The others are on the upper level past the central nail, also in a dropper amongst the ruins. Back at the lava pool, head to the lava flowing from the ceiling. Looking up, toss the netherite in. If well placed, it will float up the column. The netherite will be dispensed back out as an elevator arises from the lava. Get in the elevator and click the note block to descend. If the elevator happens to break down, a ladder will be available by the wood supports. At the bottom, waltz right up, the diamond is there for the taking. The emerald tip will remind players that llamas will spit at aggressors. The only llama in the cavern is at the back of the base camp. You may have noted that there is a nearby target block but have lacked the means of activating it. If you attack the llama, and carefully juke its saliva, it will activate the target block. Behind the target block against the wall, a block has opened up, falling in and shifting, will allow the Rube Goldberg machine to launch you into the Emerald Room. If this method does not work for any reason, such as poor redstone or server latency, a hole next to the llama's pen should be open for you to fall through for a short duration after the initial launch. The Emerald would be under the shroom for the taking, then follow the signs to exit. The Nether Star tip describes how a skulk catalyst will detect unaliving of nearby mobs. Under the corrupted gunk lining a wall, you will find an altar with a sword stuck in it. The sword is labeled as a sacrificial blade that is described as oddly clean. Nearby you will find a pile of ooze which contains a spawner, spawning a slime whenever you get close every 30 seconds. The player will have to lead this slime to the altar for sacrifice. The mob does not need to be on the very top of it, on the stone should do just fine. Once the slime is no more, a passage will open up at the end of the enclosure. The nether star can be found in a dropper on this balcony. The totem tip describes the mechanic of naturally spawning leaves decaying if they are not near a log block either by adjacency or connected to leaves that are. The leaves still record these changes, even after a player places them themselves, and is used in the redstone technique referred to as leafstone. At the base camp, by the green tent, you can find a barrel containing acacia wood, renamed to petrified wood. Take these wood blocks to the top of the cavern by following the path across the spire over the nail. Up here you will find a bunch of leaves. Among them is a leaf block of a different variety. The logs can be placed against it. Doing so will cause a vine to extend down, allowing the player to ascend into the secret room. The totem is center presence and can be obtained by right clicking. The apple tip tells how a pufferfish will expand when it detects a nearby threat, and how detecting this can be used to cause and prevent things from happening. While adventuring you may have discovered that strange noises occur around the ruins at the very bottom of the cavern. These noises are hidden pufferfish that will expand when you get close. Some players may have found the book in the ruins that proposes a riddle. 
This book is not needed for this puzzle, but serves as a guide for those who understood its underlying meaning. For the puzzle itself, players need to collect five iron ingots to make a minecart, some coal, and the furnace. The iron can be found at the base camp in one of the barrels on the shelves. The crafting table to craft these into a minecart is also present at the camp. Coal can be found in several containers around the cavern, such as barrels in the collection of mushrooms, in the same collection of barrels as the iron ingots, and at the dropper in the ruins currently under investigation. The furnace can be found in the dropper in the ruins where the pufferfish reside. Players may have noticed the rails and the detector rail at the end of it. Head to the end of the track at the bottom of the hill and wait a few seconds until the pufferfish have all deflated. Place the furnace minecart and power it with coal. All the while, make sure not to approach the ruins where the pufferfish reside until the minecart has finished its journey. The pufferfish will keep its door shut if it detects a player before the minecart has reached the end. A door by the minecart's ending position will have opened. If you have followed these steps and the door has not opened, you may have encountered a rare bug in the redstone caused by a frame-perfect maneuver on your part. Unfortunately, the door is broken. I give you permission to bust down the door yourself in creative mode. In this room, you will have to press a button to receive judgment from the council. They may give you a fake apple at first. Just keep hitting the button until they decide you are worthy. Anvils will take damage after enough uses. It's actually a 12% chance to become damaged after each use. There are a lot of decorative anvils around the lab. However, the one in question is presented to be used. This anvil is in the chemical lab, surrounded on the floor by diorites. The shower nearby will dispense experience for you to use. You can use it any item found in the various containers, and simply rename it until the anvil becomes damaged. Once damaged, the floor around the anvil will drop into a stairwell. The diamond can be found in the left yellow shulker box. The emerald tip tells how a laze will drop items off at players, or a no block nearby if it has been recently played. Before fetching the alley, go to the chemical lab to collect the bow on the table by right clicking. To pair with this bow, an arrow is in a barrel on the top shelf of the same room. Make sure you've collected a few of choice materials from one of the containers around the lab. Here, I'll be using paper. Near the robot assembly line, you can find two alleys on leads. You can give the alley an item of your choice, then release them from the lead. Headed to the back wall near the corner with all the mechanics, with the alley in tow. Use the bow to shoot the target block high up on the wall. If the alley is close enough, it will pair to the note block that plays as a result. Toss some of your items on the ground for the alley to collect. As long as they are paired to the note block, the alley will fly up and toss the items toward it. And if your alley is smart, it will be thrown right into the hopper. The sound will go off signifying a success, and the wall to the left will start to open up. The emerald can be found in the center of this chamber. Majority of entities, including players, will fall through powdered snow. However, a player wearing leather boots will not freeze, nor fall through. Additionally, they can climb the powdered snow like a ladder. Leather boots can be found on the armor stand decorations in the back corner of the central area, on the wall with all the mechanisms. Headed over to the entrance of the wind tunnel room, you will notice above the doors is a line of powdered snow leading all the way to the roof. You can use the door to ascend into the snow and climb it until you reach the top. Once at the top, follow the bridge until the end. Once it ends, you will be able to collect the Nether Star. Nether portals can transfer all kinds of things, including projectiles. You can find snowballs outside the wind tunnel room on the second shelf. Alternatively, you can find a bow in the chemical lab room on the table, which you can right click to collect. To pair with this bow, an arrow is in a barrel on the top shelf of the same room. Over by the merch assembly area, there is another portal within the massive furnace. You can throw a snowball or fire an arrow through the portal. After traveling through, it will enter another portal back into the overworld to trigger some target blocks further away. If the arrow does not go through the portal, it was traveling too fast. 
either use less of a charge on the bow or utilize the snowballs instead. When successful, a minecart will roll out, right in it to head to the secret room. You will find a totem in the chest at the very back of the electrical room. Endermen don't truly avoid projectiles to allow them to pass through. When the projectile hits the Enderman's hitbox, it will lose its own collision for a time. If traveling fast enough, the projectile can go through blocks before regaining its collision. Players may have fired the laser in the laser room. When doing so, the wandering trader will cry out some random line of dialogue. Some lines allude to shooting the Enderman instead. While this inclusion is not needed to find the room itself, it is present to give direction to it. First, head up to the chemical lab room where you will find a bow on the table that you can right-click to pick up. To pair with the bow, an arrow is in the barrel on the top shelf of the same room. Head to the laser room, where an enderman is being held in a test tube. This can be finicky at point blank, so the player is recommended to fire at range. Under the barrel of the laser will be two stair blocks. Stand between them and fire at the enderman. This is one of the most consistent distances to get the best effect. If you find it does not work, Try shifting closer and further away until you get a spot that works for you. The door will open on the wall, where the wandering trader's test tube would have been stored. You will find an apple leaning against a bookshelf. You may right-click it, and it will shrink, allowing you to pick it up. Projectiles can be thrown further when thrown during the upward velocity of a jump. So clearly we need to throw some projectiles, and it will need to go a distance not reachable by normal toss. In the main room housing the sarcophagus, facing said sarcophagus, to its right will be a chest containing water bottles. You only need one, but I would suggest collecting several just in case you miss. Head to the room with the Anubis statue in the Ankh Bridge. From the left arm across the gap, on the wall will lie three candles, one of which is blue, clearly an out-of-place block. While jumping up, Toss a water bottle toward the candle to snuff it out. No blocks will begin to play, and the wall to the candle's right will open up as a bridge extends towards the platform. Crossing the bridge into the secret room, you will find a diamond at the very top of the structure against the wall, front and center. You may right-click to retrieve it. Dismounting an entity can place the player on ground that is higher up than they can reach. The only rideable entity in this level is the camel at the entrance. There are many places the player could try to reach with this trick. However, one place brings more suspicion than others. One of the wind paintings in the main sarcophagus room has an out-of-place block below it. That typical sign that something is off. This painting can be passed through, but is out of reach to the player, riding the camel. You can hug the wall and align the painting to your left or right, as you would naturally get off a mount from the side. Dismounting the camel will place you right behind the painting. Once in the room, the emerald is in the chest inside the restaurant, amongst other gifts. Sweeping Edge can hit multiple entities that are close to the main target and cause knockback. First, you'll need the Sweeping Edge Enchanted Sword, in the central room housing the sarcophagus. Facing it, head to the left corner, behind one of the statues. Amidst raw gold blocks, you will find an enchanted golden blade that you can right-click to pick up. Head towards the room housing the solar bark. Beneath its stand lies golden and lapis decorations that are actually golden trimmed armor on an armor stand. It does not matter which of the four you choose to hit. Get close to the armor stand, look down, and swing the sword. The closer you are, the better, as where you hit the armor stand will determine the location of the sweeping AoE. At the front, the floor will open up into a pit, where you can jump in. Carpet covering powdered snow will break your fall. Headed to the front of the ship, toward the shattered hole, you may notice particles leading out like a bridge. Leave the ship, and follow the invisible pathway through the shattered portal, where you will find the Nether Star. At the end of the walkway, you can travel up a water column, and then back through a tunnel to get back. Stand on the slime, press the button, and you will be launched back into the solar bark room. 
the totem tip will remind players that experienced orbs will gravitate towards them, even through solid surfaces. Starting facing the sarcophagus in the main room, head to the front right corner behind the statue. A chest in the sand dune will contain experience bottles. In front of the sarcophagus, there is an onk shaped decoration on the ground. There is a hole that the player cannot fit into, that leads below the glass of the decoration. Standing at the bottom, and throwing the experience bottles toward the top where the hole is, the player can lure the orbs to the path down the hole. The player can then guide the orbs to the bottom, where there is a pressure plate. Walking away from the orbs so the gravity loosens, it will fall onto some pressure plates to trigger it. Opening the stairs behind. Down in the secret room, the player can discover the remnants of an older tomb. By the poor victim, there is a compass the player can pick up with the right click. The compass has a note that tells the player to drop it off where it points to. Doing so will dispense the totem on the floor. The tip tells of suspicious sand and pottery shirts hinting at its location. The diary found at the entrance tells how a previous adventurer broke his brush, and that the glyphs on the pottery shirts he found are suspect. While this diary is not integral to the puzzle itself, it alludes to the solution to help players. The brush he broke, as well as the pottery shirts, can be found in the back of the solar bark room, near some coffins. The stick, copper, and feather can all be picked up by right-clicking. The relevant shirts can be found in the nearby chests. Back in the main room housing the sarcophagus, there is a crafting table that is a part of the sarcophagus itself, hidden under a trap door. This can be used to craft the brush. Only four shirts can be found, depicting a diamond on two of them and a pickaxe on the other two. It only takes four shirts to make a pot, so the player should look for a pot with the same four markings. There are a lot of pots, but only one will have two diamonds and two pickaxes. This pot can be found at the entrance. The suspicious sand is beneath this pot, and the edges of it are still reachable. Using the brush, slightly start brushing the sand and the door will open adjacent to it. Traveling into the room, the golden apple can be found on the table on the patio outside the house. Snow layers do not physically cover the blocks they are on, unless stacked high enough. Target blocks can easily be hidden below for a projectile to hit. In the ballroom, in the chest by the pool sticks, you will find snowballs labeled as cue balls. Take these to the bathtub in the bathroom, where its basin is composed of snow layers. Throwing it at the one furthest from the handles will open a stairwell by the sink. The diamond will be at the back of the room on the bench, which you can pick up by right-clicking. A cool effect that is easy to miss is that the pictures are only viewable through their respective portals, which I found very neat. Interacting with entities can be picked up by a skulk sensor, and can be specifically filtered for by a calibrated skulk sensor on frequency 6. Players may have found a journal in the barrels of the kitchen, where a point describes the cat's favorite meal spot. While not required for the room, it helps give a more natural guidance to those who discovered it. In the kitchen can be found salmon, by clicking the buttons on the fridge and looking into the droppers. The salmon can be taken upstairs into the cat's abode, where the player can then tame him. The player can then lead Long Cat into the ballroom to get him near the chest to feed him. The natural cooldown for feeding is approximately 30 seconds. If the player feeds the cat while he's on wool or carpets, those blocks will occlude sound and prevent the sensor from picking it up, so it is encouraged to avoid such blocks. The billiard table becomes an elevator, which the player can then ride down into the secret room. The emerald is in a device in the room at the end of the hall. Foxes can leap to kill their prey, under certain conditions. Since foxes attack chickens, the player should pick up the eggs in the kitchen before headed to the fox pen outside. While the player cannot enter the fox pen directly, they can throw eggs into it from the entrance. There is a mismatched grass block in the pen next to the melon, which is the signifying target for the egg. Throw the egg into the pen at the melon, landing at the correct spot will spawn a chicken that will not instantly be killed by the console which has been active to prevent players from flooding the level with chickens. Sir Flufox may take a few or a lot of back and forth motions as he decides to eat the chicken or not. While it is pretty entertaining, it makes me stress every time if he's actually going to trigger the door or not. Come on, jump. I 
Sechong! Once he jumps, lights will emerge behind you leading to the fountain, where the floor has dropped into a spiral staircase. The stairway will open up to a low gravity area where the star is there for the taking. To get back, head up the bubble elevator to get back to the fountain. The player can feed a brown mushroom different flowers to guarantee the next suspicious stew they receive. On the second floor, there are two flowers in pots on a table. The table has little arrows pointing to these flowers, and the player cannot grab them. The player can, however, find flowers in the fridge located in the kitchen. There are all kinds of flowers, but the ones needed are the same as those on the display we just saw. The lily of the valley and the cornflower. In the barrels of the kitchen, you can find some empty bowls amongst random suspicious stews, of which aren't very helpful. Feed the suspicious bovine one of these flowers, then right-click with an empty bowl to receive a suspicious stew. Repeat this process with the other flower. Consuming one of these will give you poison, and the other will give you jump boost. Go back upstairs to the table with the flowers, and stand on the amethyst. Consume one of each type of stew. With the poison and the jump boost combined, the player can jump high enough to get through the painting. Try timing the jump with the damage took from the poison. Inside you will find the totem, which can be right-clicked to pick up. This tip simply tells that a chiseled bookshelf can be used as a combination lock, and will provide an extra tip for those who are struggling to locate the combination itself. Strewn around the house are differing texts. Among these, a chiseled bookshelf instruction manual can be found in the center-right shelf in the office room. The book describes how a chiseled bookshelf works for those uninitiated, as well as extra detail of waiting for the clicks when inputting the books. The code itself, as told by the extra tip, is said to be within the five volumes. Among other texts around the house are books labeled as Monologue of the Sinner, Volumes 1 through 5. Volume 1 can be found on the table in the foyer room near the house entrance. Volume 2 can be found in the office on the table near the window. Volume 3 can be found in the ballroom atop some bookshelves. Volume 4 can be found in the bottom left chiseled bookshelf in the office. Volume 5 can be found in the shelf below the plushies in the office. Each volume tells the different things, but for the code, the importance is in the page numbers. Each volume describes the order of the digits, while the page count aligns to the number in the code. Looking at each volume, the player can tell the code is 3, 2, 4, 4, 5. The only chiseled shelf that gives off a click after interacting with it is the top right shelf in the office. This shelf is also seen to have an observer facing it if the player opens the trap door above it. Inputting books into and out of the relevant slots, with time to hear the clicks in between each submission, the player will open the door in the fireplace. Do note to wait in between for the machine to register each number as well as the fourth slot being interacted with twice, once putting the book in, and once taking it out again. Shift your way past the fire into a very long stairwell. In the room, the apple can be picked up at the end of the hallway and at the center of the lookout viewpoint. Once you have completed the map, a final portal will be activated that you can travel through to seal the concept art for the map, which looks very low quality because I do not have an artistic talent. Thank you for playing my map. If you have any questions pertaining to the map, I will do my best to answer in the comments below. Until next time, take care.